June 30th, 1971. A Soviet space capsule makes a flawless landing in the Kazakh steppe. Recovery teams rush towards it, celebrating a record-setting mission. But within, there is only silence. Three cosmonauts are dead. No explosion, no crash. Just lifeless bodies in a spacecraft that perform flawlessly. This was Soyuz 11, a catastrophe enveloped in a paradox, a triumph that concealed chilling oversights, strange turns, and a truth hidden for years. What caused a simple allergy test to seal the fate of three men? How did a 30-second valve malfunction evade the scrutiny of the world's leading engineers? And why did astronauts plead to escape their space station, only to be commanded to remain? Tonight, we reveal the 11 most peculiar, haunting questions that continue to cloud this tragedy. From a fateful crew exchange to a leader's tears, from disregarded warnings to a whispered one, one, one death code. This is not merely history, it is a high-stakes poker game where the cosmos dealt a deadly hand. The cards are finally laid out. Let us uncover what has never been clear. But before we commence, please like and subscribe to our channel to support our community. The space race denotes the intense rivalry during the mid-20th century, where the United States and the Soviet Union fiercely competed to achieve supremacy in space first. This crucial technological confrontation is widely regarded as having served as an alternative to direct warfare between these superpowers. Following the Soviet Union's historic launch of the first satellite, Sputnik, into orbit in 1957, the battle for technological supremacy between them and the USA unfolded in a new arena, high above the Earth. Continuous efforts to surpass one another fueled significant scientific advancements and transformed astronauts in America, alongside their Soviet counterparts, the cosmonauts, into celebrated national icons. Nonetheless, serving as either an astronaut or a cosmonaut during this era of rapid and urgent progress involves significant risks at times. The Soviets gained an early advantage in the competition, building on the success of Sputnik by achieving the first manned spaceflight sending Yuri Gagarin into orbit aboard Vostok 1 in 1961. As the two rivals aggressively vied for dominance over the subsequent decade, both faced catastrophic, fatal incidents. In 1967, the three-member crew of the American spacecraft Apollo 1 tragically lost their lives during a ground test fire. That same year, Soviet cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov died when his Soyuz 1 capsule on his second spaceflight crashed after re-entry due to a parachute malfunction. Despite these horrific tragedies, both nations continued to advance their space exploration programs at an astonishing pace. The following year, 1968, saw the flawless American Apollo 7 mission, which successfully tested the essential command and service module in Earth orbit. This significant accomplishment set the stage for an even more historic success the following year. With Apollo 11, the United States achieved the first crewed moon landing, an event of global importance. The Soviet response in 1971 was the launch of Salyut 1, the first space station in human history. The Salyut program progressed exceptionally well following this initial launch. In fact, the final module launched as part of this program continues to orbit today as a vital component of the International Space Station. However, like all spaceflight endeavors, this one faced challenges and setbacks. The first problem emerged immediately after the initial launch, while ground teams were still celebrating its successful deployment. It became apparent that the cover on Salyut 1's main telescope had not detached properly, significantly limiting the range of scientific activities that could be conducted aboard humanity's first space station. Nevertheless, like all space exploration endeavors, this particular initiative faced challenges and obstacles. The first complication emerged immediately following the initial launch, as ground teams were still in the midst of celebrating its successful deployment. It became apparent that the cover on Salyut 1's main telescope had not detached properly, significantly limiting the range of scientific activities that could be conducted aboard humanity's inaugural space station. New alternative goals were swiftly formulated. Just a few days later, Soyuz 10 was launched with a three-member crew aimed at docking with, entering, and inhabiting Salyut 1 for an entire month. Unfortunately, this mission was cut short when Soyuz 10 was unable to secure a successful docking with the station. As a result, the crew returned to Earth without achieving their primary objective. 
Preparations for the Soyuz 11 launch were already well underway. Initially, the backup crew designated for the Soyuz 10 mission was scheduled to undertake this flight. However, just four days before the planned launch, one crew member, Valery Kubasov, began to show signs of illness. An urgent X-ray examination revealed minor swelling in his right lung. Medical professionals feared this could indicate the onset of tuberculosis, a potentially fatal disease, and thus in strict compliance with Ministry of Health regulations, the entire crew was deemed medically unfit. It was later discovered that the swelling was merely the result of an allergic reaction, not tuberculosis. This unfortunate misdiagnosis inadvertently saved the lives of the three original crew members while tragically sealing the fate of their replacements. The substitute Soyuz 11 crew comprised Gorgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsayev. Their launch took place on June 6, 1971, from a cosmodrome located in Soviet Kazakhstan. Due to design constraints, their spacecraft was extremely compact. As a result, the crew did not have enough space to don their bulky pressure suits within the confined capsule. On the following day, June 7th, they successfully executed a precise docking maneuver with Salyut 1. The cosmonauts remained aboard the space station for an uninterrupted duration of 22 days, establishing a new endurance record for human spaceflight. Their time was filled with various experiments and data collection utilizing gamma-ray telescopes. Patsayev achieved the remarkable distinction of being the first person to operate such a telescope in the vacuum of space. They conducted thorough studies of terrestrial weather patterns, carefully nurtured plants such as Chinese cabbage and onions, engaged in experiments involving tadpoles, algae, and flies, and performed cardiovascular monitoring tests on one another. Much of this groundbreaking scientific work was carried out under intense global public scrutiny. For the first time, the general public received regular updates on the developments of an ongoing space mission. The crew even took part in a live television broadcast transmitted directly from their orbit around Earth. However, not every aspect went smoothly. The demanding and repetitive work schedules implemented to optimize their scientific output aboard the station, which required one crew member to remain awake on duty at all times, inevitably led to considerable interpersonal tension. These three cosmonauts had received only a few days' notice to mentally prepare for their unexpected assignment to carry out this vital mission. Among them, only Vladislav Volkov had prior experience in spaceflight. They suddenly found themselves facing the challenge of enduring a longer continuous period in space than any human had ever experienced in recorded history. Mission medical specialists voiced understandable concerns regarding the potential effects on their psychological health during such an extended, isolated stay. These worries escalated significantly when, on June 16th, the crew noticed a distinct smell of smoke permeating the station. They successfully identified the origin of the issue, which was a minor electrical fire, and promptly extinguished it, adhering to the precise instructions provided by Alexei Yeliseyev. Yeliseyev, a highly skilled cosmonaut with numerous previous Soyuz missions, acted as a vital link between the crew and mission control on Earth. The three men endured a restless night confined within their Soyuz 11 spacecraft capsule, while the station's atmosphere underwent a comprehensive cleansing process. Although they narrowly averted this immediate potential disaster, the frighteningly close encounter understandably left the entire crew feeling profoundly unsettled and anxious. They formally sought permission to conclude their mission ahead of schedule and return home immediately but ground control officials firmly maintained that the station environment was now entirely safe once more. Daily televised reports showcasing their activities inside Salyut continued throughout their entire stay. The men quickly became celebrated household names across the nation. Predictably, any reports regarding internal crew tensions or operational challenges were meticulously omitted from these broadcasts. Instead, the coverage focused solely on emphasizing positive accomplishments and milestones. For example, on June 19th, Viktor Potsayev celebrated his 38th birthday, becoming the first human to commemorate such an occasion while residing in space. A few days later, the crew began thorough preparations for their eventual return journey home. By June 29th, they had carefully packed all their collected film canisters and invaluable scientific specimens and were fully ready for departure. The Soyuz spacecraft successfully detached from Salyut 1 and completed three full orbits around Earth before commencing its critical re-entry sequence. As planned, 
Both the orbital work compartment and the service module were discarded, leaving the crew confined solely within the cramped descent module. At this critical moment, all communication links with the descending Soyuz capsule were suddenly cut off. This loss of contact raised significant concerns, although it was not immediately deemed catastrophic, as the descent phase was primarily managed by automated systems. As the module approached the ground, its parachute system deployed automatically, resulting in what appeared to be a flawless textbook landing. The recovery team arrived at the landing site within 10 minutes, noting that the capsule's exterior looked completely intact and unharmed. However, repeated knocks on the hatch received no response from within. Upon forcibly opening the capsule, they were met with the horrifying sight of the three lifeless cosmonauts. Immediate resuscitation efforts were launched at the scene, but tragically were entirely unsuccessful. The dire situation was communicated back to Mission Control using their established 1 to 5 health status reporting system. A rating of 5 indicated a crew member in excellent health, while 1 represented the most severe condition. On that tragic day, the report sent was clear, 111. The exact cause of the cosmonauts' deaths remained officially undisclosed for nearly two full years. The mission had captured the public's imagination, and Soviet authorities were keenly focused on emphasizing its many successful scientific achievements, intentionally downplaying the tragic loss of life. In the United States, news of the disaster sparked serious concerns that the human body might be fundamentally incapable of withstanding prolonged exposure to the space environment. Eventually, however, the true cause came to light. The forceful jettisoning of the modules during descent had inadvertently caused a faulty pressure equalization valve to open prematurely, leading to a catastrophic, rapid decompression. The crew, unable to wear their protective pressure suits due to the severe spatial constraints of the capsule, succumbed to asphyxiation within moments. Viktor Patsayev's body was discovered positioned near the malfunctioning valve, leading investigators to deduce that he had survived for a brief period, identified the leak, but did not have enough time to rectify it. Alexei Leonov, who was originally designated as the Soyuz 11 commander prior to the crew change, had strongly advised the manual closure of these valves before re-entry, expressing a well-founded skepticism regarding the automated system. Regrettably, it seems that the replacement crew tragically overlooked this crucial safety measure. Subsequently, Alexei Leonov performed tests on manually closing the valves and found that the process took him nearly a full minute, a time frame that far exceeded the mere seconds available for the ill-fated crew to respond effectively during the sudden decompression crisis. Three men perished in silence secured to their seats in a capsule that descended like a dream. Was their mission a triumph? Was their return a funeral? We have traversed through the 11 most peculiar shadows of Soyuz 11, from an allergy that turned into a death sentence, to a 30-second valve that claimed their final breath, to the desperate cries from orbit that went unheard. However, what continues to haunt me is this. What if Kubosov had not sneezed? What if Leonov's warning had not been disregarded? What if ground control had heeded their pleas, urging, get us out? We will never know. For in the ruthless game of chance, that is the space race, these three men held the losing hand, yet their legacy extends beyond a mere monument in Kazakhstan or craters on the moon. It is a question inscribed in the annals of cosmic history. How many tragedies lie concealed behind the flags we proudly wave? How many heroes perish for victories we never genuinely achieved?